Howdy guys. So I've had my A6500 now for about half a year. I actually buy and sell camera equipment on eBay and this came in a giant Sony camera dot. But I decided to keep it for about 6 months and just shoot with it on occasion to see if I liked it or not. So in this video I'm going to be talking about my impressions of this camera and what I like and don't like about it, including tons of sample photos. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you're obviously going to notice is the fact that it is absolutely tiny. This might be a slight size upgrade if you're coming from like the A6000, the grip and whatnot is a little bit beefier. But in any case, it's a Sony APS-C camera, it's designed to be hyper compact, especially if you combine it with the white lens. Like right now, I've got the 16-50 to kit lens. Not the most amazing lens if I'm honest, but man is it tiny. Like this thing actually fits in my pocket, which is amazing. I've also occasionally paired it with something like the Mikey 35mm. This is a tiny 35mm manual focus lens, and as you can see, doesn't really add much size to the camera, fits in my pocket. Typically my lens of choice is the Sigma 30mm, which is what I'm currently using to shoot this video, so that's why you can't see it. But yeah, pretty much any compact lens on this camera is going to keep it like super pocketable, super compact, and it's, it's just great man. It's great. Now that being said, the compact size uh, doesn't really, it doesn't skimp on build clarity. As you can see, the body is pretty nicely made. I mean, this is some sort of like magnesium alloy or something. I don't know, it's got some sciencey name, but it pretty much just means the camera body feels good, feels heavy duty in the hand. Like this isn't going to be, you know, an A7 III for example, but for an APS-C camera, this thing feels good. I feel like I could probably drop it from where I'm sitting right now and it'd be just fine. Now, something to keep in mind that this thing doesn't technically have weather sealing. Sony says it's like kind of resistant to dust and moisture, but I think that pretty much means like, you know, don't go swimming with it or anything like that. With that being said, I've taken this out into some gentle rainstorms, a little bit of snow, and on beaches, and I haven't had any issues with it. And then finally, aesthetically, you know, obviously the aesthetics of a camera are not super important, but I like how this thing looks. I mean, it's definitely kind of basic. It looks like every every other camera on the market pretty much, but it's a clean minimalist aesthetic that I think fits the camera nicely. From a usability and like comfort standpoint, this thing is a joy to use honestly. Like like I mentioned earlier, the grip is decently beefy for an APS-C camera. I mean again, it's not like an A7 III for example, but it is pretty comfortable to hang on to. I don't feel like my hand is cramping when I shoot with this for a couple of hours. But what's really nice about this is there's a bunch of custom buttons. You got like two of them up here, and then on the back, most of these guys can be customized. So you get just like an extreme degree of customization to where you can fit it to your needs. And when you kind of get used to it, it becomes very intuitive. Like the camo pretty much feels like an extension of your body as you get used to the controls and everything like that. And speaking of which, one of my favorite features with that is you have this little switch here. Switches up and down, makes a very satisfying click. And you can customize that button in the center to react to that switch. So that's even more customizable buttons without taking up extra space. Now, as far as image quality goes, I'm not gonna speak too much on it. I'll be flashing some, you know, pictures up on the screen here, but if you've done any research into Sony cameras or you've had a Sony camera, you know the sensor in these things are great. I mean, you're gonna get crispy, high quality images, 24 megapixels, you know, good amount of detail in editing wire photos, great dynamic range, everything like that. There's not too much to say about it. Pictures just look fantastic, and I have absolutely no complaints. When it comes to video, however, I do have some complaints, but not necessarily about the quality of video. This thing does shoot 4K 30fps, 120 fps and 1080, you know, the, the specs are fine. They're, they're pretty good, and honestly, daytime footage of this thing looks fantastic. It does have a mic jack on the side here, and then of course, <laughs> as with most Sony cameras, the record button is very awkwardly placed right there. Very annoying, but it is what it is. But the big issue with this camera for video in my opinion is that the screen doesn't flip up and it does not flip out like this. So unfortunately, if you're like me and you shoot YouTube videos where you need to be in front of the camera instead of behind the camera, this is kind of a no-go because I've tried to shoot with this thing before and I mean I can't see the screen. I can't see myself. So unfortunately when I've shot with this camera before I've had to get this like stupid hot shoe attachment that has like a mirror on it so I can like see down into the screen. Huge pain and honestly it's really the only thing about this camera that I absolutely hate. Like if this thing had a flip out screen 
I would not even be using my ZVE-10 right now. But yeah, besides that, video clarity does look good, so if you're behind the camera usually, definitely recommend this for shooting video. Oh, and speaking of which, I should mention, it does have in-body image stabilization, so you don't necessarily need stabilized lenses or anything, and the IBIS does a pretty good job. It's not amazing, but I can hand hit footage usually and get decent results, and I've got some shaky hands. Now, with that being said, despite the screen not flipping up, the, the actual quality of the screen is pretty good. Hi, you can see me on it. It's not like incredible, but I've found, you know, playing back images and previewing that I'm trying to shoot, no complaints from me, maybe I'm just not a snob or something, and then I kind of feel the same way about the viewfinder. The viewfinder is the same size as I think pretty much every Sony APS-C camera. It does the job, it's not extremely high quality, but, you know, it's bright enough, I can see in it. I like the sort of viewfinder, or rangefinder style, where it's mounted on the top like that. So, no complaints from me with the viewfinder. And then, as for autofocus, I don't even have too much to say about that. I put some, like, footage up on the screen here showing the autofocus of this thing. But it's pretty much like what you'd expect from Sony cameras. I mean, I've never used a Sony camera, with the white lens at least, where the autofocus wasn't honestly insane. I mean, this thing has eye autofocus, it has subject tracking, and they, you know, they're fantastic. Honestly, they're great. For people who like to shoot with manual focus lenses, such as this little guy, this does come with the standard suite of features like focus peaking, magnifier, everything like that. Uh, if you want to learn more about manual focusing, I do have a separate video. I'll link it, I think, up there? Or is it that side? Maybe it's that side? Something like that. You can go check that out to learn more. And finally, last thing to talk about is the battery life. So these batteries are pretty tiny. They use the typical, like, classic APS-C size battery. And, uh, you know, they're not great, but they're not bad. I've noticed mine usually die within a couple of hours if I'm out shooting. Because if I'm, like, down in the city for the day taking pictures, doing street photos and stuff, I'll usually bring an extra battery just to be safe. And on that subject, I've had a lot of people ask if you should buy the OEM batteries from Sony or if you should buy off-brands. I've got mostly off-brand batteries, and honestly, they've been just fine to me over the years. I've been buying third-party batteries, you know, since I started doing photography, because I was super broke then. I'm still broke, but not as much as I used to be. <laughs> so, yeah, don't tell Sony I said this, but don't buy the Sony OEM batteries, just buy third-party batteries, trust me. Okay, so I just dumped a ton of information on you, so you're probably asking yourself, like, should I actually buy the A6500? I'm gonna make it super easy on you. If you're primarily doing video, or you wanna get into YouTube or something like that, I would say just buy the ZV-E10. That's what I'm shooting with right now. I've used this for pretty much every YouTube video I've made. It's incredibly for video. Not amazing for photography, but it's a hybrid camera. I'll link my review up top if you wanna check that out. You know, see if it's for you. Otherwise, if you're looking to do just photography, like you wanna just shoot pictures, you don't care about YouTube, you don't care about videos or anything like that, definitely buy the A6500. I mean, this camera's a beast. You've got a Benton layout that's pretty much hand designed for photography. You've got an amazing sensor. You've got a great viewfinder. It's great, man. For photos, the A6500 is fantastic for the price. So nowadays, I think it might be discontinued, so you can't necessarily buy it new per se. So I'd recommend either checking out eBay, or you can even buy used on Amazon, which can be a little bit hit or miss, but I've usually had good luck with it. So I'll link those affiliate links in the description below. If you buy through them, obviously I get a tiny kickback, so thanks in advance. And yeah, after you definitely buy this camera, you should come back to my channel and check out my tutorials on how to use it. That sums it up guys, thank you so much, and have a great day.